We are going to construct the bones of this fabric covered journal during this video. We will also be creating the signatures and binding those signatures within our cover. So I'm pleased that you have stopped by to join me in the creation of this. I am making this as a baby gift for a baby shower and the mother is expecting a baby girl. Therein lies the gray and pink colors. She's decorating her nursery in gray and pink. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am pleased that you stopped by and hopeful that you will hit that subscribe button. And once again, the notification bell will notify you when I upload additional content. So for this particular project, I chose this gray um, fabric that has a little pink tint to it. And I also am choosing some papers out of my stock that reflect those colors, the pinks and the grays. And as I said before, this is a baby gift that I am making. You can make it in any color combination that you want. But I'm going to set all of that aside right now so I don't get it messed up. We'll put the fabric and we'll put the papers and we'll toss that aside and we will work on just detailing where we want this book to be. And I am wanting a little opening on the front to thread a ribbon through. And I also don't want it to be massive. So I'm going to go with six and a quarter inches in width, one and a half inch spine and eight inches in height. So with those dimensions in mind, I have cut my two pieces, my front and back cover. I have cut those to the six and a quarter by eight and I have cut the spine one and a half inches by eight. So we will set those closely together and unite them with some duct tape. Now, I am utilizing the box that my K-Cup come in, comes in, and I find that they're very sturdy and a very great quality. Now, the duct tape I always use. I always pull off about what I would like to use, and I place it unsticky side to unsticky side in a U, and then lightly touch it down. That keeps everything from wiggling around on me. So watch this time and, and you'll see what I mean. So you can see I have it in that U shape and now I just lightly touch it down and smooth it out. And that for me works better than anything um, in holding everything in place while I'm trying to get everything secured together. So now we have a duct tape. So we have the foundation and I am going to cut out my little hole that I wanted there. So I'm just drawing around one of my stamps that worked out to be about the right size and using my X-Acto knife to cut that hole. So no real intense measuring here, just finding something that, that worked. Laying the fabric down to determine about how much I need. And now with the Fabric Fusion or Fabrifix, either one works great. I'm just going to spread this over and lay my fabric down. Just smoothing it out. And I'm gluing it one side at a time. So I'm not, you know, trying to put that big piece of fabric down all in one sheet. I glued one side and then folded the other side over and laid the glue down and glued the other. Now, this glue, it, you can see it through the fabric right now. It dries clear and, and we are going to be fine when this finishes. If you want to make that a little more even representation, take a card, a hotel key card, a credit card, and spread that glue out to a fine layer, and you won't have these little um, representations of your glue marks, but it, it dries fine and, and we don't have any issue. Now I'm just going to cut an eye shape here in this fabric so I can fold it up and fold it over. So I'm using the X-Acto knife and I'm just cutting a capital I, if you will. 
and that is going to give me four pieces to fold over. And I'm just gluing, gluing them down. I have this little steampunk charm or piece that I want to use over this whole opening. So I'm laying it down just to determine if it's going to fit and if it will work. And I think that it's going to work just great. So with the art glitter glue, I shall go around the outside edge of this and place it over that opening. The whole purpose of this is to you know, provide a little decoration over that hole, but also to give me a place to thread a ribbon if I need to, if this gets too thick, if that makes sense. So now I have that glued in place. It's time to continue wrapping this gift, if you, if you will. So we're just going to cut the corners on the fabric and wrap the, the cover just like we would wrap a gift. I'm going to move all of my scraps out of my way, save those in case I want to use them in the project or inside the book in additional pages or page decoration. So I try to keep everything related to a journal within a file folder that it's easy for me to get to. So I've glued that down and I'm just taking the scissors and my exacto to cut the fabric away from where we cut the hole in what is going to be the front cover and a thin line of fabric fix along the outside edge and we'll fold this fabric over and just treat the corners as if we were wrapping a gift. And this fabric is stretching a little bit on me, so that's why I cut um, on it a little bit and pulled it and glued it just to keep it nice and taut on the front. Again, I'll just get in a little closer and you can see a fine bead of glue and just folding that corner over. So now that we have it finished, I want to figure out how wide to cut my paper for the actual signature covers. And I, since it is six and a quarter inches in width, I'm going to multiply that by two and determine how wide I want that paper. So I'm going to cut it about seven and a quarter inches in height to give me some room from top to bottom and about 11 and a half or 12 inches in width. And now I'm just laying that down two pieces of paper together because this particular scrapbook paper is only printed on one side. And rather than trying to decorate that with ink and so forth, I'm just going to sandwich two together or glue two together. And now I'm just creating a little pocket on the front cover or the front of the signature. So I have a little tuck spot there. I'm just going to go diagonally across and just create that little side tuck spot. I'm going to do that on both, front and back, just putting the glue on two sides, inking it up. Should have done that before I did the glue, so we'll do that on the next one inking around the outside edges. Front and back. And I've decided to go with a belly band on the back. So it's just a strip of paper and you'll be able to tuck something underneath there. So this is very simple, very easy construction. I 
And there, I have two of them put together, and that will be the covers for our signatures. And they're going to fit in there nicely. We just need to fill them with paper. So I have pulled some coffee dyed paper, um, some Kool Aid dyed paper, and a sheet of the echo dye paper that I have done, and I'm going to cut it in a height that is going to work and in a width that will fit inside there. So once again, I'm looking for that 11 and a half inches in width and no more than seven and a quarter inches in height. And I'll just fold all of that in half and that completes the signature. Now I want to go ahead and ink up all of these pages before I sew this together because I find that it's easier to ink before I construct the signature. It's a lot more difficult to ink these pages once the book is together. My preference. I purchased these corner protectors. You can find them by just keying in corner protector or metal corner protector for books or for journals. They slide on very easily over the corners and they're very simple to press into place. I'm using a pair of pliers with no teeth so I don't mar or scar the corner protector as I apply that pressure to set them on the corners. As you can see, they slide on very, very easy, and it's just a quick and simple light pressure that will clamp them or crimp them into place. And I think they add a little extra dimension to the book, as well as they're great protection for those fabric corners, so those corners don't fray and, and scar. The signatures fit in the book fine i wanted to just do a, a final check and take a look at how they're going to look and now i am measuring to punch my uh, or not to punch my but to cover my front and my back so i am thinking when i did this that i would remember those exact dimensions and be able to recognize them when i threw my fingers out there but that's not the case measure you can measure the inside cover, you can measure the inside back and determine what size piece of paper you need to cover that um, area. So the front cover on this particular journal with the little hole that we have cut in there needs to be narrow or more narrow or a smaller width than the back cover. And that's why I was doing the measuring just to make sure that I got it into a dimension that would not cover that hole that I have cut. So I rounded off the corners, I'm going to ink them up and then just simply glue them into place. Very easy and ready to, to go. Now don't don't worry about that nasty looking hole there, the back of that hole. I know it's not presenting itself as a, a beauty mark on this journal, but I do have an idea to cover it that will look good through the charm that we have on the front cover. Just glitter glue, putting it down and gluing this into place. That glitter glue is, is a great product, but it does glue very, very quickly. So if you're using it, make sure that you know exactly where you want to put something or you wind up, you know, damaging your paper to get it into place.
so I have chosen to cover this with, um, I'm just going to cut a couple of hearts out and I'm going to cut one out of just a pale pink Kool-Aid dyed paper. And I'm going to cut the other out of this scrapbook paper. So I'm going to fold that in half and just free cut my hearts, both of them at the same time. So I'm going to have two hearts of equal size. And what I should be doing here is inking around the outside edges, but I'm not. So if you're following along, please ink first. And that pink is going to be glued down over the top of the hole. So I am only putting the glue on the outside edge of the heart so I don't make a mess of glue inside the hole. And now I'm putting this orange and pink part down on top of the other just a little offset to add a little bit of interest when you open up the front cover of this book. Now, ideally, one would have inked these prior to gluing them down. But as you can see, I didn't. So now I'm going to come back and pull it up just a little bit and try to get that inked after I've already put it into place. So that happens. I'm okay with that. We got through it using a Q-tip to ink around the outside edges. So, you know, just a little bit more work. Now I've cut a piece of white lace to glue down on this inside spine. I'm not concerned about the black duct tape showing through this lace because we're going to punch holes for the signatures and bind the signatures here and you will not see this. I'm using this key card or card to spread that that glue without getting my hands a gluey mess. And now I just want to kind of take the side of it and press it where the journal folds to get that lace glued so it will catch properly when the book folds. Now it's time to bind the signatures into the book. So first things first, let's trim this lace and get it flush with the top and with the bottom. So I'm leaving just a tiny bit to peek out over the top and a tiny bit to peek out over the bottom. When I'm getting ready to bind the signatures, the first thing that I'm going to do is determine where I want those holes. So I have already placed holes in the spine of the book and I created two rows of three holes along the spine because we're binding in two signatures. So I measured one inch from the bottom, one inch from the top and punched a hole and then measured equidistance between those two holes and put a hole right in the middle. So you can see here I have my signature in my hand and I'm finding that hole that I've punched on the spine, putting my finger there and just marking on the signature right where that hole is. So the two will line up together placing this binder clip on it just to secure it. And now that I have made those marks, I'm going to use the smallest hole on my crocodile and punch through the signature. So now I have three holes along the spine of the book and three holes that line up with those in the signature. I'm measuring out embroidery floss into the, the three times the length, threading the needle, and we're going to go down the center hole from the top to the bottom, and then we will come up through that top hole from the bottom to the top. Now we're going to go back through that center hole, and we will come up through the bottom hole from the bottom or from the bottom of the spine through to the top. And now a square knot, pull it tight and tie a square knot. And the signature now is bound in. So you're going 
from the inside in the center through to the back of the spine, going up from the outside end and the top, back down from the center to the back, and then up through the bottom to the top and then tying that square knot. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. I think I think you could probably see it when I did it. But now I'm just tying a little charm on the bottom of those leftover floss tails. And that completes putting the signature in. So we will repeat the same thing with the second signature. Both signatures will then, then be completed inside the book. So see, that works out quite well. And now I'm going to, after I get the second signature in, I'm going to flip the book over and lace the back spine. So I'm going to cover those threads that we just placed when we bound the signatures in with this piece of lace. I'm using the Fabri-Tech or Fabri-Fusion glue, just gluing along the outside back spine, and I will place this lace over the top of that and cart it in. And that completes the construction of this book. So this is the finished piece ready to decorate and I'm really pleased that you stopped by and went through this process with me. I hope that my directions make you understand it is a very very simple thing to do. A fabric covered journal is probably the easiest in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe. And if you hit that notification bell, you will be notified when I add additional content. I am going to place a playlist in the upper right-hand corner here. I've been altering playing cards, and my goal is to do 52 in 52 days. So if you want some ideas for things that you can tuck into spots in your journal, hit that playlist and follow along with me. Subscribe by hitting the picture of my husband and me in the upper left corner.